Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this figure A shape of the chain, how to make it into the bracelet. Are you ready? Let's get started. This video is going to talk about how to build this figure eight link. Uh, not cover the clasp here. I do have a clasp course and that is uh, showing you 11 different type of a clasp that you can use. You can also use the model directly uh, for your jewelry piece. But let's start talking about this figure eight shape. Depends on the size that you want it on your figure eight. Um, you can you can do your uh, own size, but I basically wanted to do is about roughly about this size. And then I'm going to making a copy, moving this one to the side. And then so now I have a two circle I can blend in between. Now, if you look at the perspective, they are completely flat. So I'm going to move one of them 90 degree, look something like that. Okay, so to blend it, uh, we need to make sure that our curve is an open curve in order to, to blend. So it depends on how big you want them to be. Um, let's say I'm going to cut it in right in the middle. So make sure that your quad is on like this. And I'm going to draw a straight line connected to the quad with those two. I'm going to use the trim command to trim something in between. All right, so we no longer need this line. We no longer need that line. Now I have something like that. I'm going to use the blend command to blend in between here and here. And click OK. We're going to blend between here and here. And click OK. All right, so let's go ahead to join them. Now you can see that in the perspective, it looks something like that, right? Um, in both my top and front view, it looks like a teardrop. And if you get that shape, then you have it correctly. If I do simply just wanted to pipe it this guy for whatever thickness, you're going to get something like that. Sometimes you will get this pinch right there. It's because the direction of our curve is kind of fighting over there. So if you get anything like that, all you need to do is rebuild this guy into one curve. So we want to rebuild this guy. And you want to rebuild in the way that you don't lose too much of the original shape. The original count is 18 of them. If I use the same 18, you will see it's really close, but it still have a little bit deviation. So you can bump it up maybe 24, but make sure the degree is three and let's click OK. Then we'll have something like that. If I'm going to pipe it this guy one more time, for any thickness, so I'm just going to try the radius for 0.5 and we'll get something like this. Notice that this is really nice and smooth. This no longer have a pinch there. Okay. But having a link going like this is kind of boring, right? And it's too industrial. Look, I want to have a little bit more decoration. So in fact, instead of using the pipe, I want to design, um, my own pattern, right? So I'm going to do is to make it look like a two wire soldering together. So I'm going to create my wire profile. So first one is this guy and I want it to be rounded. So let's go ahead to using the fitted corner and I want the fitted radius for 0.2. All right, and then I'm going to move in this guy out a little bit and make a copy and make sure that it is um, overlapping. And let's go ahead to trimming somewhere in the middle and let's go ahead to join it. All right, so this is going to be my pattern. Apparently it's like way too big. So I'm going to scale it down just a little bit something like this. Okay. I'm going to move this one to connect it to here, but I don't know where's the center. So the easy ways is draw a line, make sure your midpoints on and snapping here and here. And then we are going to move the whole set by moving that uh, using a move command. And we want to snapping into the quadrant there. So in the perspective, you can see they are aligned really nicely. 
It may be too fat. I don't know. Let's give it a try. We want to do the sweep one rail, rail cross section, and you get something like this. In fact, this is actually pretty good, right? Uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind that is when you have another piece coming over here, you need to have another room. Otherwise, it will bump each other. If this piece is too big, uh, it might be jamming into each other. Depends on how kind of flow that you want it to have. All right, so that look nice for us. Then I can creating a curve for this guy to flow. So I may want it to have something go like this straight going up and going something like this and coming out like this depends on how long you want it and i'm going to move this one to that first curve there let's take a look on the perspective we are going to use the command array along the curve and we're gonna pick up this object to array hit enter this is the path and right now i got 12 as a default there and I want to have a lot more. You kind of need to guessing. So maybe I want to have 40. And when you have 40, you can see that it's kind of jamming each other. It doesn't look good, right? So maybe I want to reduce to 30. And it's actually 30 look nice because it's not touching and you have enough room to go around and everything arrange, uh, arrange it nicely to follow this curve. So I'm going to hit enter. Let's take a look on the render view and then this will be the link for it. Once you have your design, all you need to do is bring out the clasp from the course. If you sign up the course, you can use those model directly. This is a barrel clasp and then you can use it directly there. I hope you enjoy the video. I got a lot more trick and tip on my membership. If you're interested, check on the membership with a monthly small amount of money, but that you have a lot more video to watch. Thank you for watching. I will see you next.